Welcome, Aisha. Um, you're going to space soon. And so my question to you is, what is your earliest memory of looking up at the stars? I can remember being a kid, maybe elementary school, and I would just stare at the sky at night and be like, what is this? Every one of those pieces of light sparkling, I would say, I wonder what's on the other side, right? Mm. I knew that there were planets. I knew that there were stars. I mean, I'm pretty sure that most people love when they start talking to you about the solar system and the galaxies when you're a kid. And I always just wanted to know what it would be like to just go there. And I'm delighted to share that I have the opportunity to actually get a little closer to the sky I love to look at so much. So where did your journey begin? My journey began in kind of a low place. I was in community college and I had no idea what I wanted to do because I had not performed well in high school. I didn't think that I was capable of much. And in fact, I got used to being underestimated. Mm. And I remember one day saying to myself, I don't ever want to feel this way about myself again. And so what I decided to do was commit to a world that was of my own making. And at first it sounded to other people like a fantasy. I just made up the life that I wanted to have and I, I wrote it out and I thought about it and I said, I want to go to a school where people will know that I was smart. And I want to reach for something so big that if I accomplish it, I will know that dreams are real. And once I do that thing, that thing that no one thinks I can do, that they still think sounds crazy when I say I did today, that the next thing, the natural thing, is to work at NASA because that's what all um, awesome, amazing people do. They work at NASA. And so my list became, I want to graduate from the University of Michigan with a degree in aerospace engineering. And once I do that, I'm going to work as an aerospace engineer and I'm going to work on satellites. And from there, every single one of those things that I wrote on the piece of paper, they became true. I graduated with an undergraduate degree in aerospace engineering from the University of Michigan. I went on, I pursued a master's in space systems engineering, and I went to work for NASA, where I worked on satellites the size of a shoebox in the small spacecraft division. And then eventually I decided to transition and found my own engineering company, which I've now had for 12 years. Oh, that is a beautiful journey. Um, we love to hear about the accomplishments that you've had, um, but I know that it took you some time to get there. And so what have you learned from some of those failures that might have happened in the beginning? I wish I understood that failure was success in progress. Mm. Now, when I talk about the perceived failures, which I totally believe that failure needs a rebrand. Yeah. It's not failure, it's learning. It's just a different type of learning. It's the painful, uncomfortable kind that makes you reach. It makes you want to explore. It makes you want to be better. Because I failed, I tried harder. I did more and I became better. So when I think about not going to college initially, that was the best thing that happened to me. Even though in the moment it felt like failure because when I finally went to the school that I chose, I knew that not only did I earn it, not only did I deserve it, I wanted it and I knew what to do with the opportunity once I had it. And that cycle has repeated itself over and over again in my life. Often, hindsight, yeah. in hindsight, because when you're going through it, it's like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> but in hindsight, I get to say that these inflection points in my life were so valuable because had I been successful the first time, yeah. I would not have learned the skills that I needed to be successful over the long term. So bringing the conversation back to aerospace and the industry that we're in, um, what do you think is still missing from that conversation about inclusivity? I think that we need to talk about joy. We need to talk about excitement. We need to talk about what happens when you connect with somebody who may not come from your background, may have nothing in common with you other than your love for the same subject. I have been privileged over the course of my life to have mentors who are completely different than me. They brought me into this field 
They protected my career. They encouraged me and they inspire me now. And because of that, I have been able to do things that I never thought that I could do. I was able to be a positive contributor early in my career when I had no idea what it took in order to be successful. Mm -hmm. I was able to be promoted. I received NASA honor awards. I got a chance to go on details and go to headquarters and work with the best in the field. And then when I felt as though I wanted another experience, my mentors made it possible for me to be exposed to people who ran businesses who were working with NASA so that I could understand how the other side of the fence operated. And all of that was because they were striving to create an inclusive place. And now I mentor people from all walks of life. Some of my mentees are working in the very same commercial space companies that are leading the way now. And I'm also running my own company, which never would have been possible before. I hadn't seen it, but my mentors showed me people who did it because they were inclusive. And so oftentimes, you, you gain more by giving back. Now that you're in the next steps of your journey, um, what excites you about going into space? Oh my gosh. Because it sounds a little scary to me. I mean, okay. But, yeah. Okay, so it's so exciting and it's hard to wake up every single day and be so excited because I wake up and I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to space. And I'm like, okay, <clears throat> you have to go to work today. Like, just focus. But then I'm like, space, yes, space, okay. So how can I even begin to share the emotions and the excitement behind the dream that I was afraid to have becoming a reality? I was afraid to dream this dream. I was afraid because I thought there's no way that I ever could. And I'm realizing that the things that we think are impossible often become possible if we dare to believe. Mm. In this moment, I'm so excited that for me, it's not about me, it's about we. And as part of my mission, I'm carrying dreams from students around the world to space on postcards through Blue Origins Club for the Future. And that was really important for me because this is my dream, but I wanna be a vehicle for other people to share their dreams and then have a little bit of space with them at home. Oh, that's so beautiful. Um, I think the amazing thing about the Michael P. Anderson program um, is we, we, we're able to give um, kids who don't usually come from a background of aerospace um, and, and inform them on what aerospace is. And we have industry professionals who come in and mentor them. Um, what would you tell your middle school self um, about the dreams you have now and your journey now? What advice would you give to someone who's in that position now? I would tell her to hold on, it gets so good. When I was in middle school, I just, I had no idea what I wanted to do, nor did I see people in aerospace. And today I get to be here with you talking about this career field that I came so close to missing out on and I love so much. I never thought that I would be here and heaven knows my grades in high school didn't think I was gonna be here either. But none of that mattered because once I knew what I wanted to do, mm -hmm. I locked in and I applied myself and I became really, really good at it. And that's the amazing thing when there's alignment between who you are and your passion and your purpose, it's like everything just comes together in ways you never would have previously experienced. And so to go into aerospace and to know that I get to share my journey and say, I did not from early days think I was gonna be an aerospace engineer, but I came one. I never thought I was gonna work at NASA, but I did. Mm -hmm. I never thought I was gonna be recognized by NASA for the things that I did, but I was. And now I'm getting ready to go to space. Imagine what you could do if you dared to dream. And I need people to see that oftentimes success is nonlinear. Yeah. You're going to have ups, you're going to have downs, you're going to have moments where you feel defeated, but it's all part of this larger story, the story that becomes the journey of your life. And to be able to be on the other side of that a little bit and to say, here are all the things that happened that I thought were going to crush me, but they didn't, they made me, is truly a joy. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give in building that community? Um, I loved how you talked about how you had 
so many people behind you throughout the years. So how do you, how did you build that community to surround you and support you? I was relentless in my desire to tell people my dreams. Mm -hmm. And I think when you tell somebody what it is that you want to do, especially somebody who may be in the field and they recognize it in you, you can kind of like you feel it, you know, yeah. like you see it. I mean, you're a mentor, you know, it's just that moment of magic. Mm -hmm. And then you make a decision. And that decision is I want to be an asset. I want to be a support. I want to be able to, to help empower the stream. But I'll be honest, not all of the people I told the dream were about that dream. Yeah. And that's okay, because sometimes people can't see what's inside of you. So don't tell people, show them, mm. right? Show them your dreams and allow for them to come in to your life and make you better. Sometimes I feel like when people speak to students, they're not real about all the things that did not go right. And I think that's really important because otherwise you're looking at me and you're saying, well, she accomplished all these things. I could never do that. But you don't see the things that make me more like you, right? Unless I share them with you and say like, hey, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know how I was going to pay for college. I had no idea how I was even going to get into the school that I was accepted into. But at each step, I found a mentor and I found a supportive person. And I allowed myself to pour into other people in ways that empowered them to pour into me. I mean, even today, and I say this especially to my young ladies out there, if there's somebody that you know that's having a bad day, just tell them they're awesome, right? Yeah. I kind of have this like, it's like a baddies like, call and receive, yeah. right? Like I will literally just text my friend and be like, oh, you're amazing and you look pretty and I saw you on Instagram and you look good, right? Just let people know that they did something good because far too often your accomplishments are surrounded by silence. Yeah. And for a lot of people, these things can be years in the making. So just let people know that you appreciate them. Let them know that you're applauding them and that you, you know, you want to empower their dreams and you make space for them to empower yours. That is beautiful. And I feel like you're already making history. You're already becoming an inspiration. Um, and with that being said, you're going to space soon. So who are you carrying with you? Who, who's standing on your shoulders as you're going through this journey? Um, my dad just died. And uh, one of the things he said to me before um, he passed was that not only was he proud, but that him, all of our ancestors, mm -hmm. and all of the people to come would be so proud that I had the courage to live a life that didn't have any boundaries. Mm -hmm. And so when you ask me the question, my, my first thought is that I am carrying my ancestors. I am carrying my family. I'm carrying everybody who believes in the impossible, everybody who's ever been underestimated, everybody who's ever dared to dream and their dreams, literally with me to space on this mission. I remember growing up and seeing all the people who fought for something, mm -hmm. right? Whether you talk about Ruth Bader Ginsburg and the Supreme Court, regardless of your political affiliations, you know that she stood for something. And we are now, we are now going to be the elders that people look up to. And so the question that I have for everyone is now, what are you going to do? What is your contribution going to be? And I feel as though my contribution is to be a story. And it is to be an uplifting story, an exciting story, an empowering story that also has some moments that feels like, wait, did that actually happen? Is that true? Like, really what? Like, she got to go to space? Even for a little bit, for a moment, that's great. But mostly that the overwhelming feeling that people take out of it is inspiration. As someone who grew up not having um, a vision or a picture of what an industry professional as a whole was. Um, it's beautiful to know that some kid is growing up 
looking at you knowing that this is what an astronaut looks like. So thank you so much for your contribution um, to our industry. Um, and I think I want to end us off on a fun note. So what would be your astronaut wake up song? Ain't no mountain high enough. Marvin Gaye, <laughs> Tammy Terrell. Mm -hmm. Because it's true, right? Sky is no longer the limit. It's the start. Oh, that's so beautiful. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for having me.